Sonia here with Ellie and Mac today and I am super excited to be bringing you a new technique video. Today we are going to go through bands and bindings. So our t-shirts, our leggings, our sweaters, everything in the knit world has a band or a binding on it and I want to go through a few different things that we get asked all the time in our Facebook group and that is how do you calculate the length if you want to modify your neckline and also how to get that perfect, perfect finish. So we are going to first look at some bands and how to get your bands looking absolutely perfect, how to calculate that length, and then three different methods for doing a binding if you prefer to do a binding where it wraps around the edge of your fabric instead of a band. Depends on the technique that you want to use, the finish that you're looking for, and these are also really great uh, tips to use when you are sewing with a little bit more difficult fabric. Now I like to sew with these really lightweight drapey fabrics and it's super super helpful to know what techniques are going to work best if you're using a fabric that rolls or something that's thin enough that you can double it over a few times to give it a little structure, any of those things. So we're going to go through those today. Both of the fabrics that I'm using are from Stitching Pretties. The white is a rayon rib knit and the gray is a mid-weight uh, organic cotton. So one is going to be a lot drapier and the other is going to have some more stability. So you can keep that in mind too when you are sewing your bands and bindings and uh, what's gonna, what technique is going to work best for what fabric that you're, use, you're using. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is measure our neckline. And you're just gonna need a paper and pen, a calculator, your pattern, and a tape measure. Now you want to make sure that when you're measuring, you do this as accurately as possible. It's super, super important because even the smallest measurements, because neck bands aren't super long, will make a big difference. Now for a band, we wanna multiply it by 0.85, and that's 85%. And for a binding, you want to multiply by 0.9 or 90%. Keep in mind this is just a starting measurement because it does depend on the stretch of your fabric as well. Your width of your band is going to be one and a half to two inches depending on what style of band or binding you use. Now remember our pattern piece is cut on the fold both the front and back so we're cutting our neck band on the fold as well. And I like to use a grid ruler to cut my bands. I find that I get the straightest line that way. So I'm going to go ahead and line that up with the one and a half inches and the 12 and a third, which was our measurement for our neckband, and cut that out. But because of that large amount of stretch that this fabric has, I did end up shortening my band about a quarter of an inch on the fold, so half an inch total. So as with any band, I'm going to fold it in half and press it. And I did speed this up so you guys aren't sitting there watching me press this. <laughs> and then I unfold it and I'm going to go ahead and sew the ends of the band together. Now I'm marking my centers of the front and the back of the shirt with clips so that I can line my band. And this is pretty standard to most patterns, so you've seen this before, I'm sure. But once I have the front and back clipped, I'm going to go ahead and clip the sides and then do a few clips in between and then we'll take it over to go ahead and attach it. So this is a quick tip if you find that you're getting wavy neck bands or they're not laying as flat as they could. What's really tempting to do here is to pull the band so that the fabric underneath lays flat because your band does need to stretch to fit and that's what is going to keep it from flaring out on the finished project. Now what you want to do is you can pull it a little bit to stretch and then make sure that you relax your fabric and you'll see that it's a little bit loose underneath the band and the serger will go ahead and ease that in because the feed dogs pulling the fabric through underneath actually pull that bottom layer through faster than they're pulling the band. So again you're going to want to flatten that out and then release that tension and then sew and that will give you a better result. So now that I have threaded my serger tails, I'm going to go ahead and press the neck band. And this step is so important if you want to get a really nice flat laying neck band. And when you're pressing, you want to do just that straight up and down. You don't want to push the fabric like you would with an iron because it can distort your fabric. Now look how perfect that neck band looks so far. We just have to top stitch. So I really love the two 
lines of stitching for bands especially. It gives you a really clean look and you can use a cover stitch to get this look or a double needle on your sewing machine. So before we get into the shirt that I'm sewing the binding on, I want to show a few different ways to attach a binding. Now this is a typical um, band attachment just to show you the difference. You have it folded in half and ironed and then you stretch it to fit. Now the difference with bindings is it's going to wrap around the edge of your fabric and you're going to sew it down. This first binding style you would actually want to cut your band two inches wide instead of an inch and a half so you have room to fold it in half and then fold each side towards the center. Now you are still going to stretch it to fit but you are going to completely open it up and this is on the right side of your fabric and you open up all four of those layers and clip it and you're only going to sew that top raw edge. Okay, now that that's sewn on, you can see why it's important to really take the time to iron these well, especially with a very lightweight fabric like I'm using, because you're going to fold the raw edge that's not attached in and fold it again, and that way your edge of your neckline is completely enclosed and your binding doesn't have any raw edges anywhere. Now this is a really beautiful finish. It does take a little bit of finagling because you have five layers there that you're working with. Um, but when you're working with lighter weight fabrics like this, that's not as much of an issue. So I did use my cover stitch to top stitch this one as well. You can see that chain stitch on the back and it does give a really nice finish where everything is enclosed. This next method starts out looking like we're attaching a band, but do remember that our bindings are longer, so that is the first initial difference. Now we're going to fold our binding in half and attach that with our serger or sewing machine. You attach it to the right side of your fabric, and then you're going to wrap the binding around the seam to the back or the wrong side. I used a one and a half inch binding here, and you have just enough width in your binding to cover that seam allowance. Now it is very close, so you could do a longer band here, or a wider band if you wanted, and we're going to do the same thing, take it over to our machine and top stitch. And I just use a single needle in my cover stitch. You can use any top stitching method you like, but this is a really nice clean finish as well. So this last method is my favorite, but it could not be your cup, to, cup of tea just because you do have a raw edge exposed. Now you're going to stretch your binding to fit unfolded and sew that raw edge. And once our binding is attached, we are wrapping it around the back side and clipping it. Now rather than folding it under like we did in the first method, I leave it raw. And the reason that I do that is so that I have enough space to stitch in the ditch on the front side and catch that binding on the back. Now I'm using this EcoFlex stretch thread because I want to maintain the stretch of the neckband since I'm going to be using a straight stitch. So this is the stitch in the ditch foot that I use. I use this almost always when I'm top stitching anything because it helps me keep an even distance towards the edge of the fabric with that little plate right there that it lines up with. So when I use this foot, I keep my needle in the center and that is going to stitch just perfectly next to that binding and it's basically going to be invisible. Now I do want to lengthen my stitch because we are sewing a straight stitch and you want to maintain a little bit of stretch, but that's also going to be assisted by the stretch thread that we are using. So I'm not taking it all the way up to a 5 length, I'm only using a 4. So once that's done, you can see that you can't see that stitch anywhere. It's right in the ditch, and on the back side, we are going to trim off that extra fabric. All right, friends, I know that was a lot of techniques to go through in one sitting, so thank you so much for sticking around. I really enjoy bringing you these technique videos and definitely want to know what you want to see in the future if there's a sewing-specific uh, technique that you are struggling with, please let us know and we would be happy to uh, add that to our list of technique videos. So just so you know, this is the finished product 
product of the white rib knit shirt with the raw edge binding. I really love this. It gives such a nice slim neckline finish and it's just it's so simple to do and very low profile. I love the, um, the drape of this fabric and so finding a technique that works with a nice thin fabric like this was such a winner for me. And and then this is the final of our organic cotton and I absolutely love this fabric for t-shirts and using the band technique that we used in the video. I think it looks so professional. It lays nice and flat and it is absolutely perfect around the neckline. So hopefully you guys found that video helpful. Again, let us know what else you would like to see and don't forget to share your makes in our Facebook group. We'll see you next time.